It was a long time coming and following another dull showing, Barcelona finally decided to part ways with their under fire manager, Ronald Koeman. The Dutch tactician was once regarded as one of the finest managers in football, but the last few years haven't been easy for him. His tactics were outdated, and on top of that, he was unable to get the best out of what should be considered a gifted crop of young players, who should be able to guide the club back to a much more prosperous era. In his place, Juan Laporta is trying to bring in legendary former midfielder Xavi Hernandez, and most of the fans of the game, not just Barcelona, are swooning over the possible return. Can Xavi do exactly what his former coach at Barcelona, Pep Guardiola, did? In this video, we're going to talk about Xavi's future at Barcelona and how his arrival at Camp Nou might finally turn things around for the beleaguered Catalan giants. Barcelona started off the post kuman era with a one-all draw at home to Deportivo Alaves, but something scary happened during the game that needs to be discussed. Paris Saint-Germain thought they'd struck gold when they signed Jorginho Wijnaldum for free but the move hasn't worked out for either party and it appears that the Parisians are looking for other options in midfield. Following a 5-0 lesson at the hands of Liverpool, Manchester United finally managed to return to winning ways. And we really need to talk about what the future holds for a team that's not out of the woods yet. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon and like the video. As always, if you'd like to have your take on these topics, sound off in the comments section. In a matchday week where Chelsea returned to the top of the league standings, Liverpool continued to add more Ws on their portfolio and Manchester City lost at home to Crystal Palace, Manchester United travelled to London to take on Tottenham Hotspur. The game was touted as El Sakico on social media because managers of both teams had a lot riding on the encounter. Nuno Espirito Santo is struggling to get the best out of what is a talented squad, while we've already said lots about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's credentials. This time around, the Norwegian decided to go for a back three, comprised of Victor Lindelöf, Harry Maguire and the returning Rafael Varane. Aaron Wan-Bissaka and Luke Shaw took to the wings, while Scott McTominay and Fred formed a double pivot. After weathering an early onslaught, United were able to take the lead through a Cristiano Ronaldo volley from a sumptuous Bruno Fernandes cross. The Red Devils would then double the advantage, thanks to Edinson Cavani, who got on the end of an inch-perfect pass from Ronaldo. Marcus Rashford added some more gloss to the scoreline after finding the net in the 86th minute. This was United's first clean sheet since August, and we can remember this game as an event where Spurs welcomed back a wounded animal and effectively nursed it back to full health. Following the final whistle, the Tottenham Stadium was echoing with boos from the home fans, asking for Santo to be sacked. For Manchester United, it was a very effective display, but their feet should be kept firmly on the ground. With no intention of disrespecting Spurs, they're not really the greatest test for a team's credentials these days. Solskjaer's future still hangs in the balance, and the games against City and Atalanta are going to be massive. But still, the 3-0 win does help boost confidence. I can't say I'm completely happy because the situation is not what I wanted, but it's football, and I'm going to have to learn to deal with it. I am a fighter. I have to stay positive and work hard to fix it. I have played a lot in the last few years, I've always been in good shape and have also done very well. It's something different and you have to get used to it. This is what Wijnaldum had to say about his predicament at PSG back in October. The Dutch midfielder hasn't had a great start to life in Paris and only half of his 14 appearances have been starts. The former Liverpool man is far from the player who shone under Jurgen Klopp. It appears that the South American contingent at PSG have not been very welcoming towards the Dutchman. Apparently, Wijnaldum's arrival makes things difficult for Leandro Paredes, and now we have some more bad news for the former Newcastle man. According to Italian media outlets, PSG are discussing things with Inter Milan for their star midfielder Marcelo Brozovic. The Croatian international becomes a free agent in June and hasn't agreed an extension with the reigning Italian champs yet. PSG have got into the habit of signing free agents in recent times, and it also appears that the stars are perfectly aligning for PSG, whose sporting director Leonardo met with Nelio Lucas, Brozovic's agent. Everything seems to suggest that the experienced midfielder might seriously consider moving to France, where he'll be offered a better deal. So is Wijnaldum going to be on the move again?
During the one-all draw against Alavis this Saturday, interim Barcelona manager Sergi Barjuan chose to hand Sergio Aguero his first start at the club. Unfortunately, the former Man City striker was unable to finish the game and was replaced by Coutinho in the 39th minute. Aguero went down while clutching his chest and fell on the turf. He clearly looked in discomfort as players from both sides came rushing to the veteran striker's aid, fearing for the worst. As it turned out, Aguero was feeling dizzy throughout the first half. Sergio Aguero was struggling with chest pain for much of the first half and was replaced by Philippe Coutinho at halftime and then taken to hospital for cardiac analysis, a club statement said. I was told he was feeling a bit dizzy. I have just learned that he was taken to hospital and I can't say much more until I know, Barcelona's caretaker coach said. That was a real scare. We hope that Aguero is back to full fitness soon. He hasn't been dealt the best of cards ever since he moved to Barcelona, so let's just hope that he recovers quickly and returns to the starting eleven. A new era at Barcelona. Laporta really wants to initiate a real revolution. While he sacked Ronald Koeman on Wednesday night, the appointment of Xavi should not take too long. The former Blaugrana midfielder's arrival is going to create a lot of scenarios within the Barcelona workforce by taking a decision that probably should have happened years ago. The first player whose future might be secure following Xavi's arrival would be that of Clément Longley, who might like to see him play as a left central defender alongside Eric Garcia, who is already an undisputed starter. This means that Xavi will have a serious talk with his good friend and former teammate Gerard Piquet about his status in the team. The likes of Ricky Puig and Alex Collado weren't used a lot by Kuman, but that could change following Xavi's arrival. There are four players who will see their importance diminish. The first one is sadly going to be Luke de Jong, who was requested by Kuman. The veteran striker isn't a shabby player at all, and a parting of the ways in January should be on the cards. Philippe Coutinho is also unlikely to get much of a look in, and the club might consider loading him out again. Memphis Depay should also be a bit concerned about Xavi's arrival. The Dutchman is renowned as an individualist, and Xavi might expect him to blend in with the rest of the team in a collective approach. While Barcelona haven't formalized anything yet, the arrival of Xavi is imminent. The Spanish tactician intends to join the club this week and is eager to start as soon as possible. Currently under contract with Qatari giants Al Saad, the former Barcelona captain is expected to inform his Al Saad players about his decision soon. However, Al Saad's management claims that Xavi has a two-year contract with the club and is completely focused on the upcoming games, as the Qatari giants look to defend their league title. But then again, for Xavi, the chance of returning to his beloved Catalonian club is too precious to ignore, and the former World Cup winner is definitely going to find a way to return there. According to several sources, the former midfielder has already found an agreement with Barcelona. The Qatari club also doesn't wish to retain its coach against his will. Al Saad will take on Al Duhail in their next encounter, and the club wants to make sure that Xavi is at the dugout for that encounter. Not only that, Xavi's current employers want the Barcelona management to come to Qatar and personally see things through. It's been said that Al Saad players were shocked to find out that their manager wants to leave. The Spaniard has actually formed quite a close bond with his players in Qatar. Xavi hopes to arrive in Catalonia after November 4th, as the club's socios await with undisguised impatience for the return of the prodigal son. All in all, we're certain that Xavi will leave Al Saad in an amicable manner and that his return might be exactly what's needed to resuscitate Barcelona back into a team that competes for top honours, rather than barely getting by against teams that play musical chairs with relegation and promotion to the Spanish top flight. Once the deal's announced, we're going to do a tactical analysis of how Xavi likes his teams to play in order to prove or maybe disprove that he's the right man for the job. So stay on the lookout and make sure your notifications are turned on.